have here? Well, this is your collection of goodies, huh? That's... Uh, this is various peripherals. Uh-huh. The, uh, document uh. printer, spin writer. Is this like a Diablo printer, or is that...? Uh, yes. In particular, uh. it's electrically equivalent to the, uh, uh, OEM version of the Diablo printer. Wow. Which connected to the computer with about 20 wires and cost mm. about two thirds what one of the serial interface cost. Wow. And so to make this thing work, you have to have the right driver, which is quite complex, and to put this multiple parallel port board wow. into your computer. Wow. Huh. That was the S100 uh, bus. Uh, That's an S100 four parallel port uh, inside board. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's what we'll get working? Uh, no, neither oh. printer. This didn't, I believe I had the uh, disc with the right driver on it. Cause the driver has to be built into the bias, and it didn't seem to go, and I didn't investigate more deeply. Okay. That one. So that's to show off that printer model. And this box contains the Teletype 40 mechanism that goes in this cabinet. Oh. And parts of that had rubber that were deteriorated, and I haven't even applied power to it. Oh. Mm. But that was what I made my program listings on. Hmm. But it, it has an upper and lowercase print chain in it, mm. so that at a cost in speed, I could make rough drafts of documents. Cool. But it, cool. it doesn't really print nicely enough. Uh, if actually, you look at it as it arrived. As it arrived, and there it is. The MSI, the okay. disk drive, the monitor. Wow. There's a keyboard in the box there. Historic. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Oh, it's a sheet for this is for what? adventure. Yes. An adventure game? Yes. It was like You're Dungeons and Dragons or something? Or uh, it up, uh, yeah, there was an adventure game written in Fortran that I also saw in Data General Machines. Really? I saw something similar at Deck on bigger machines, somewhat more elaborate. It was huh. apparently around in the uh, bunch, the late 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s. Huh. I don't know quite where it came from, except I got it from a tech. Put a little CRT in it. Yeah. Huh. Does this go with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the display of music. So let's put so out yeah, That had 64 characters across. Let's put oh. It was too small. Yeah, that was kind of like in the original. The keyboard uh, on there. Let's make a yeah. nice little. Design. The Osborne. Looks like the Osborne would fit in there. It may that. have been the same OEM product. Yeah. So I bought it somewhere. Yeah. So this one didn't have those deck type switches like the PDP no. series. No, I was telling Bruce they saved a bunch of money. Yeah, by doing Because they don't serve any. Once, once the thing works, they don't serve much purpose. Yeah. I mean, if the computer basically runs, there's a ROM monitor, which will uh, let you examine and change memory. Yeah. And you know, start at a given address. And you know, basic debugging things. Yeah. You'd do from the front panel if you were starting cold with a computer that had no software. Yeah, but now we have software. So yeah. A, a there's a monitor and ROM in the thing. Yeah, and I'm not developing hardware with it, and I got a disk operating system, so I don't use the ROM monitor for anything hardly. Huh. Except you used to use it to set the baud rate for the line printer. Huh. The line printer. This is on the parallel port. There's huh. one parallel and one serial port huh. on the CPU board. Huh. No. Two of the disk interface. So video, CPU. Yeah. Two memory. And the disk interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, double mm -hmm. card disk interface. Mm. Which I think ha has another ROM on it, as I recall. Was it a 400K or an 800K? Uh, neither. Yeah, don't no. help. Yeah. And I'll show you the command to change it. Okay. It's because it's a really <laughs> Case just for one of these printers, huh? Take paper down there. Yeah, the paper presents. goes there, up through there, and then the paper either folds there. Or it goes out through a. Oh. These technology. Mm -hmm. The printer mechanism is Model 40. Look up Model 40 on the internet. You'll see they, as a terminal, they have a keyboard, this printer, and a video screen. Oh. Right. How the video screen related to the computer, I don't know. Hmm. This was the only part of the system that it interested me. Oh. This is from Gates and of the Box, another manufacturer. KSR means keyboard send and receive. Hmm. Yes. How many pages per minute could this thing do? <laughs> uh, a lot. Yeah. See the characters are on a belt that moves this way? Uh-huh. 
And uh, the hammers are where? I think they're either down in there or behind the paper. Okay. Yeah, so the belt is continuously moving, and when, cam when a character goes by the desired position, it's hit hmm. by a hammer. Oh. And, uh, when all those, and then when all the characters in the line are printed, hmm. it moves up. Oh. Okay, the, the, so the line paper moves. Hmm? The line, so this was the, yeah. the, the line printer, as we were saying, right? Really? Yeah. There's a special adaptation here. Yes. So this was EIA, is that what you're saying? EA, what, EA, what's the Electronic Industry Association. So Man. not quite the standard, but yeah. this made it the standard, huh? Yeah, you can see two of the conductors are moved, and a lot of them are just left open. I see. <laughs> and uh, then there was still a provision you needed in software. I think it was a delay after a form feed. Huh. If you didn't delay after a form feed, the next line printed smeared down the page. Huh. Or something. <laughs> Here. Okay, well, okay. The keyboard is already connected. Okay. Uh, cable from here through a connector. I usually just take this off when I want to move it separately. Okay. okay. Right out to the. Uh, I guess I'll go back. On, on its own S100 board? Uh, no, that's the parallel port, port? on the MPUB board. For the, that's a parallel interface. I believe, it? yeah. And then there's also a serial port. No, it's the it's the processor board that included one parallel and one serial. Oh, this okay. serial port was used for the uh, Teletype Model 40 line printer. Hmm. I don't remember what that is. Hmm. Uh, and we've got a cable from the disk drive. It goes here. Do you know which directions the ribbon cables go by? They always face the back? Uh, this one does. Okay. <laughs> At least it was there and it was running yesterday. Okay. No, I'm not sure there's any consistency. And then none of them have keys in them either. You're supposed to know. I you see. can put them off on shifted one to the side or... Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you get them backwards, is there any problem sometimes? It just doesn't work? Uh, it at least doesn't work. At least. Now, there's no guarantee on anything being... Uh, and then we have the video connection comes from these two little pins oh. on the video board. Well, it comes to that. Yeah. This goes into the monitor. This is the monitor. And then the disk drive? You know for the disk drive? Uh, somewhere there should be a cord that got it for the disk drive. Yes. Okay. Seems to me that's all of it. That's all I have to do to plug it in? Okay. okay. No explosions. Okay. Now, the, until you hit the space bar, it doesn't know whether the uh, keyboard is on the serial or parallel port. You hit the space bar first? Uh, yeah. And yet this has an on off switch on it. Okay. Is it warming up? You can turn off the yes. part there. Okay. It's got characters too. Okay. Uh, now, I don't know if we knock the knob or we need to wait for it to warm up. No. <laughs> there ah. it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, see, it says hit spacebar. And it found the keyboard on the parallel port. MPUB is the name of the uh, board. Right. The CPU board that has a monitor and ROM on it. And the question mark is its prompt. Now, when you haven't used it for a while and you get to this point, it comes up with no characters, but the cursor moves. Ah, okay. You get the uh, enter key and it'll move down two lines. Uh, what I found works for that is you wait a while and uh -huh. maybe wiggle things around this board. The front board, the front board there? Yeah, the video board. Okay. Uh, the other thing you do is if you have a serial printer or something in the serial port, you need to set the baud rate. What? Oh. So I used to use 9600, so you go Z9600 in this ROM monitor. 
Okay. It's the bottom right for the serial port. The keyboard serial is port. on a parallel port. Okay. Now you want the serial the port? The serial port would be for, for the, that uh, big... Drive? No, it's the big line printer. Yeah, the line printer. Okay. For the no, the thing. floppy yeah. has dedicated hardware. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and there's, I believe there's no way to set that baud right once you're in the, in the DOS rather than in the monitor. Hmm. So now you type a B, and lo and behold, it says not ready. Put the, so put the disk in. Put the disk in. Now hit the space bar again. There's the sign on from the operating system. And now we're getting the A prompt, huh? Yeah. So is that IMS DOS? IM DOS? Yeah. Lo and behold, it acts like CPM. Yeah. There she glows. <laughs> Let me She's see. She's glowing. Something. Maybe adjust the black and white contrast so it's a little bit more black and white. Yeah. The other thing I want to do is adjust the vertical linearity. It's supposed to be here. It's to be here, and I need a screwdriver to get five years of not being turned on. Just a little, uh, little adjustment. Do word start? Adventure? Yeah, let's word check it out. You want to sit down? Oh, I'm going to get some shots as you uh, need to bring things up. At least two. And you yeah, just through a sign on delay. So, what date is this? Uh, it would be, that was probably the last one I did. Work for your camera? Can you still see? Mm, yeah, no, I you can, can turn still off see. the spotlights. Yeah. That might be the, sounds like the easiest. There it is, huh? Yeah. Are you getting good, clear screenshots, Al? Oh, yeah. I'll have to edit this down quite a bit. This is a test. Let us demonstrate word wrap. Oh, cool. Okay. Rob, well, demonstrating where we're at. Okay, good. Oh, that's, that's about tricky parts. And one of them was how to make sure it kept up with the keyboard when you type too fast for it. Oh, cool. Words I typed are too long. See, it inserted enough blanks to fill the line up to the same length because yeah. justification is on. Now you could you, you could put a um, a separate a separate a, a separate disk in the B drive, right? Yeah. And and then how would you get it to recognize it? Would you hit uh, Control C or something like that, or? Whenever you put a different disk in a drive that's been than the one that's been there, you need to hit Control C. Yeah. Which of course terminates the program you're running. That would yeah, it reboots the system. That would reboot uh, WordStar too. No, it would it would leave you. Leave you in WordStar. Well, WordStar, I believe. So like I have some data disks, so I wanted to check them out on this WordStar. I can stick them in the, the B drive, and then, and how would I access the B directory? Uh, oh, Control C is page now. Oh. Control R is page up. Okay. Okay, that's why the text disappeared. Uh, yeah, you don't want to change the disk with a program running. Yeah, so the A drive. And then stays. right on the disk. Right. Because the. Uh, the information about what's where on the disk is mm -hmm. only read when you type control C. Mm -hmm. And it'll start writing. It keeps the directory in RAM and the uh, table of what parts of the disk are free. Oh, okay. In order to get some speed out of this very slow disk. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you change a disk when a program is running, it tends to scramble the files. Not good. It writes pieces of new files into old files uh, for a bit. Given that there's been nothing in the B drive, it would be safe to insert one. It would be safe. Insert one. Yeah. But if you wanted to change it, it mm. would be best to go ba back to the system and mm. start WordStar again. I'll quit WordStar every time I change the drive? Change uh, the you, maybe you have to make the uh, computer reload the drive. Okay. Some stuff was done to address that. What did we do in MDOS? I don't remember. Maybe it says in the manual. Because well, Gary mm. Kildall, he came up with a way to detect a changed disk. Uh, and, he made, and he made it turn the disk into read-only. It wouldn't let you write it. Oh, good. And I think I made it re instead.
Hmm. Logging was the term for reading the directory information off the disk. Hmm. But I've forgotten. Hmm. I do remember that he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, tell me how he did it. And oh I yeah. Said, and I said, I bet you check some something. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, when I got the source code, he computed a checksum for each sector of the track that has the directory on it. Okay. So he got a relatively small number of words of information that would be very unlikely to be identical <laughs> for a different disk. Wow. You get one shot with this high risk man. Did the siren give a date? I don't remember. I guess we can find out. Yeah. Copyright 1980. And it says what hardware it's installed for. Which is important. Uh, yeah, because this gets a lot of its speed by going directly to the video memory. Hmm. There's, for each character position on the screen, there's a character that appears in the main address space, a byte. Hmm. And hmm. if you store into that, the character appears that are in the screen. Hmm. And you, you can output through the usual operating system calls and it will display that this is much faster. Mm. Mm. On the other hand, if you, if you do it the other way, it's much more horrible. Because mm. this word star is installed in its full detail will only work on this configuration. We'll start up a document again. Do the other to return. See Reform, was, control B. See, That's if he was... If he was pointing to each of the things, yeah. you know, while, yeah. we, while we video, if he's pointing to it, he can give us like a visual tour of the... What, what I just star. did was typed a bunch more text in the middle of a line, and the line got too long. It does oh. not automatically word wrap as you type, reword wrap. Okay. Let's so now I'm going to type control B, and it should realign that whole paragraph. To hi oh, it's asking me where I want to put a hyphen. Oh, because you have a long stretch text string. Yeah. The hyphen at press dash. Uh, okay, let's put the hyphen right there. And there's our paragraph realigned, and it doesn't have the, quite the huge gaps in it it had before. Hmm. Yeah, so I The hyphen at it, one of the worst over long words. So um, let's see. Yeah, now. So you've got cursor, control A, control E, upline, control, control A, left word. You could show us how, where the uh, cursor key combination is. Yeah, do you uh, have the keyboard you in the... Yeah, yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. yeah do you have the keyboard as well as the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. To be able to see. The uh, cursor keys were intended to be in directions corresponding to where you okay. wanted to move. There you go. Uh, like if you go... I need to get in the middle to start. Okay. Okay, so there's a diamond here. We have up, down, left. Right. Right. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and this diamond. Now we go Move further over to the right here. It goes right a whole word. Gotcha. So you can see. Are you but since that whole line is one line, the cursor is going to jump to the end of the line. Yep. There's oh, a okay. there false is. word end at the end of the line. Ah, nice. Now nice. if I go Control A, see these are the, that's the right, that's the left. This is word left. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it went twice because. It... So that's the diamond, and that's in every yeah. keyboard. So you, you're guaranteed to have that. Yeah, it's, it, it stops in punctuation. And this is the 1978 version? Uh, 1980 copyright. 80 so copyright. It's kind of 70. Because you, you left, what, in 79 or something like that? 78. I mean, 80. Uh, case key sticks. Case key sticks. Okay, key. Okay, this time, oh, they put an end block in there. Okay, so that's, I remember those K things where begin and end block. Do you remember that? Yeah, beginning and end, that's so you could cut and paste the block, right? Yeah, we should, yeah. We should uh, show a cut and paste. And a, uh, we should do it with some real text. Do some, oh, yeah, okay. I want to look on a different keyboard because you were, I want to look on a different disk because you were asking about dates. Yeah. Uh, got a prefix. Cool. What's the, how do you get rid of the menus? What's the? You type Control J H. Okay. Control J. Does it explain it? Yes, it, it prompts them. 
Okay, good. See, I went two. It gives you the whole. When you haven't typed a prefix key that brings up a special menu, it leaves the whole screen for your document. Yes. I'm looking for dates. This is your um, your uh, bio at the time. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's your. Uh, yeah, you're asking for dates. That's your CV. We want to go to the button, go to the bottom. backwards. So it's cool. It's uh, the inventor of WordStar looking at his own resume in WordStar. <laughs> what a neat thing. Totally appropriate. I'm trying to find out the history of WordStar by looking at your resume. The list of computers. IBM 7094, Microdata 820, PDP 10, PDP 1. Data General Eclipse with AOS, CPM, MS-DOS. Assembler for all of them, Fortran 4 and 5, PLM, BASIC. Okay, uh, BBN was 1976 to 71. Mm -hmm. What else we see here is how you get formatting into WordStar. I, typed, I want something to be boldface. Mm -hmm. I got a control B in the file, which displays as a carrot and a B. As a carrot and a B. Yeah. But it was entered by typing, I think, control P and then B. Uh, that sounds right, doesn't it? We can put yeah. the menu back yes. on. And you had that what, memory sheet over here. Right? When you type control B, the next key you hit just goes into the file as a control character. I bring that cheat that cheat yeah. sheet over and uh, we can show that on camera too. Oh, then this Dirk's Electronics was the place with a softer light. Software list computer I was talking about, 71 and 72. Troll uh, KN, so it's column mode on uh, KK marks ending a block. Column mode's newer than me. I've thought about how to do columns and kind of boggled them. Copy block, control KC, yeah. new block, control KV, yeah. KW. Uh, yeah, look. Let me continue a bit on the mm -hmm. uh, your the fork, tour. which was establishing dates. Okay. Filling in blanks in your earlier audio tape, giving you an editing and collating opportunity. So I was chief programmer at IMSI, Wix Boulevard, so that place was called, from August 76 to April 78. Wait a minute, let me, hold on, let me see that, let me see that again. Oh. So you were chief, chief pre-programmer at MSI from August of 78. August of 76 to April of 78. Gosh, okay. Duplication procedures for software products. Supervised one to two other programmers. Yes, I remember the machines were flaky and I had to write a diagnostic. A diagnostic. And uh, I didn't think it got published, but I find the instructions for running it in one of those manuals. Hmm called Shakedown. Yeah, I used to send incredible uh, numbers of memory boards back to be serviced. Because I, I think I was one of the first people to put 64K, that's 16 4K memory boards, mm -hmm. into one of these machines. Because it made editing nicer. You know, with a larger area, you could, uh, more of your file was in RAM, you didn't have to wait for it to go to disk as you moved around. Yeah. Hmm. It really made a difference. It made a difference, then uh, the S tolls would like that. Yes. Oh, I implement, you asked earlier what I did. It says I implemented an ISAM, an index sequential access method, mm -hmm. which I remember doing. It was something uh, Seymour thought would be useful because he had a background in business programming. I don't, don't know if it got uh, published or got to the customers in any way or not. I think it's right before I left, for one thing. A video text editor, numerous utilities, road user manuals for Indos operating system and commercial basic. Ah, yeah, there was a guy there already in touch with Gordon Eubanks, who now I believe is CEO at it's Symantec. Symantec, yeah. Yeah, he was in the Navy and had written a basic interpreter. He'd been to the Naval Postgraduate School, I believe, where Gary Kildall was. Gary I think was that contract was already in, underway when I got there, but I tested for him. So, so when, I what was Gary Kildall like? Uh, 
he was a college professor, right? He'd been a at the Naval Postgraduate School. Right, right. In uh, Monterey. And so it's not entirely clear to me how much of this stuff was really done by students and how much in the way of thesis products he uh, uh, ended up publishing. But he, he had a little stuff, he had a little lab. So did you I remember him? going down early on to work with him on something about getting it to boot, getting it to work with him. The inside machine, maybe getting the right bias into the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. So, was he still and working? And then I went down later. Was he? He wasn't still at the postgraduate school, or was he? Had he started digital research by that point? I think he had both going. He had both going. Yeah, and I guess he moved to full-time digital digital research later. But I. So you had. Yeah, I was under the digital sold under the digital research name. So you had you had. You had heard about it and convinced IMSI to use it, to use... CD. Somebody, the information was already at IMSI. Somebody passed it to me as the appropriate thing to consider. Right, and you I said, mean, yeah. look... I mean, it wasn't something I knew in the community. Portions of things that were supposed to be operating systems written for the 8080, and that one looked far and away best. And it looked closest to a real system. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm somebody who used a real-time sharing system on a deck machine before. Most people hadn't. You know, most people came up from being hardware hackers. Right, right. And, and, they, and such concepts as having files by name were foreign to some of them until they'd seen CPM. Whereas this just sort of, you know, looked to me like what we had in our teletypes in our offices at PBN. Right, right. You know, if you came from the IBM world, then you didn't know about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Unless you happened to use the one of the relatively rare time-sharing systems. I'm still not sure if you knew... You knew how their how their file schemes worked, but uh, you know it was all card images and stuff. So there we say you did the floppy operating system. So when you were writing the, the floppy operating system, um, you had to write that as an extension on CPM, and so they didn't have one yet. Or did Gary have? Have, did yeah. Gary have a floppy operation? Yeah, he had somebody's floppies. Somebody's Yeah, floppies. Well, it was written to run in 243K or whatever they are, floppies. Gotcha. But you wrote a new one for, for the We rewrote it and edited Well, you, you had to put, you had to have the hardware primitives in your basic input-output system, your right. bias. Right. You know, the right code to read a given sector. I mean, the system was designed in the assumption there were so many tracks and so many sectors, mm -hmm. and each sector was 128 bytes on the disk. Uh, uh, that was hardwired into it, but what instructions you executed to read one or write one uh, were not hardwired into the system. They were in this little section called the bias mm -hmm. that, you, that would be, you know, which had a entry a vector of jumps at the beginning to get to the various functions and it would contain code specific to the system you were running on. So I believe I had to provide that. Uh, super sort, a sort merge package, a word master, a full screen text editor, and the first versions of WordStar, a word processor with full screen editing and on screen formatting and pagination. These yeah. programs were sold by Markiplier International Corporation on a royalty basis. They were written in assembly language for and on 8-bit CPM-based personal computers. Uh, then I have Computer Programmer, MicroPro International, January 79 through November 80. Maintained an enhanced WordStar through version 2.13, created mail merge add-on product. 80 through 83, semi-retirement, mostly loafing, occasional miscellaneous consulting. <laughs> I left the house, house renovation stuff out of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is when I was back at MicroPro. Oh, so you went back to MicroPro? Software scientist. Yeah, nothing ever came of that. And oh, this was also sad. after I just moved to San Francisco because it says 219 which is the downstairs apartment. Now we live in 221, the upstairs apartment. Oh, really? That's, wow, just, just a slight shift since that point. Well, there was a tenant in it, you know, and they were in the process of funding their, their own place, but mm -hmm. they had well. tenants' rights, and I, and I let them stay. Oh, and I stayed downstairs and painted the one I wasn't living in, I 
think. And when I got it all painted up nicely, I moved in. Did you have any working computers there in San Jose? Uh, this one. This one, huh? Uh, or one of these. And uh, uh, I've been with the PC and various clones mm -hmm. over the years. So, so you did not separate from technology, you just... No. No. Oh, I'm remembering something else. That isn't my video I aboard. Mine was apparently bad. That's why it's gone back to white on a black screen. Uh, Otherwise, it would be the opposite. Huh? Be yeah. Black on a white screen? I, I modified mine so the background was white and the text was black. <laughs> I found a spare inverter somewhere and ran some blue wires around the back <laughs> of the board. It's easier for us to video this. Yeah. There are two more of the, those boards in those boxes of stuff I gave you. Okay. Both of them bad, apparently, except that one of them has the Space Invaders ROM. Space in Invaders ROM, <laughs> right. The, uh, so this is playing yeah. Space Invaders on CPM. Yeah. Uh, None of those boxes are labeled, incidentally. If you want to keep track of what they are, label them. You know, Rob Barnaby stuff. I'll something. probably put them in their own tub. So. Yeah. Tubification. Okay. Tub it and then label it. Okay. So I left them open so you can see what's in them. So do you have any relatives use WordStar and talk to you about it at Thanksgiving dinner and stuff? <laughs> uh, yeah. My brother never really got into it. He didn't, huh? And he was a nerd, too, huh? He was a programmer. What did, let's see, what did they do with him? Yeah, they eventually went to PCs. Oh. Huh. You know, from the... Well, they had the clips and the PCs. Now, I remember at one point, you know, the book... Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy Kidder's book, Soul of the New Machine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just really number five of that. I remember a period several years later. You could say, see that machine? See this compact on the desk? Yeah. That one runs five times as fast. Uh -huh. The compact. Mm -hmm. you, know, it was, you know, it was when they had a lunchbox. I can ask him if he wants to. There's one right over there. A lunchbox compact? The next one, the one with the 386 in it, was smaller. Oh, no. It was the size of a lunchbox. It had a plasma screen on the front. Oh, right. He says he has that in the attic. Possibly he wants to ship it if, sure. if he has no the, use for the it. The CTO of Compact, the former CTO, is sending a bunch of stuff. CTO? Is that a chief? Yeah. Worst decision he ever made. Yeah, he was not happy about going to venture capital. Right? Yeah, he, he let some marketing people direct, which apparently didn't take the software in the direction that really sold. That and the uh, brains behind which Star 2000 uh, died. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But... Uh, so MicroPro didn't last much longer than... Uh, well, the venture capitalists sold out at some point. Oh, they sold it to somewhere. This way that. 1984, you were there, Before back it. there. Yeah, that you can probably find on the web somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's cool that somebody wrote your Wikipedia entry. Do I have a Wikipedia entry? Don't you? Uh, I don't remember looking at it. Maybe I'm going to put it a different... Different one. Let's see. I'll use this one if it turns out there's word star on it. Rob well, Barnaby, huh? Barnaby. Uh, it's funny, every, those, the LEDs are working on this keyboard. Yes, they do. Oh, wait, let me do a control C just to make sure. sure yeah. Oh, there are three LEDs and they're all glowing dimly. I think that, uh, that I think was my change. Shift lock, just caps only. On this keyboard. Well, this isn't. The, this keyboard is an inside design and it has an 8048 microprocessor in it, which is an all in one chip. And I reprogrammed it. I, gotcha. I, I changed the program in ROM. So, one thing it has is accelerating auto repeat. Listen to the clicks. Oh. It goes faster and faster. Hmm. I don't really think that was terribly useful, but. <laughs> but when I first found one, you know, where it waits half a second and then it takes off fast. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get two or three, it's hard. It's hard. Okay, let's go over here. Well, you're, you're mentioned in Seymour Rubenstein's Wikipedia entry. Okay. So you're going to start with Star again here? Or? Uh, we're going to find out how big the... No, first we're going to fill in a piece of information that somebody might need. Okay. Suppose you want to read a single density disk in this machine. You type this command, stat. You're familiar with stat from CPM, no mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. You're just playing stat gives you the space on a disk. Stat B colon gives you the space on the other on the B drive. Mm -hmm. But if I go stat specifically in MDOS in this version, 
stat b colon equals single that will set the b drive to single density. Gotcha. If you uh, go stat b colon equals double, it, it changes it back to double. double. Cool. Uh, we wanted to know. Let's see if we can go stat file name, can't we? Find out how big it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Yep, 14K. What, the program what, itself? 14K. Well, then there's an overlay file that's separate. It's one of them, Uh, start. Uh, no, correct. Sir, interrupt. Yeah, and then hit it, interrupt. Interrupt. It's a crash. Okay, so the yeah. overlay is 28K and the program's 14K. Yeah, but as you say, the thing will run in 24K oh. with the DOS and your file. Oh. Not much of your file. The first one, 1.0, would run in 16K. 16K. Oh. This machine is most of 64K. I think some of it's taken up by memory map I.O. Huh. This was the main documenting book for MSI. This was the... No, no, wow. The main documenting would be stack of manuals. I see. Or something. What did you actually use a lot of? What? What, what, what manuals did you actually use? Uh, to this as well as the one for the DOS. Okay. Uh, this whole manual says it's the MDOS user manual. Let's see. Up to, up to there, it's the DOS. Okay. Oh, here's the Ed user's guide. The, ed the editor. That's something you use. Here's the assembler. How to use it. Did you how that? to assemble a program. Yeah, cool. Did you write uh, the, did you write the uh, doc for WordStar? Uh, yeah, for the first few versions. But that, that's what we need to dig out of the other box. Uh, I don't want, or, oh yeah. I do want to say it. Yeah, I got it. to undo your changes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's old you memories, you know. 25 plus years ago. The other thing to know, I don't remember what snake is. I think it was. Yeah, I think. Reach a hundred dollars before your phone. How many prayers? There we go. Because I didn't read the instructions. Control C used to work. Yeah, except in weird stuff. Well, there's the universal solution. Uh huh. Cold reboot. We have a mystery light in the keyboard on, and it isn't working. Oh, I had hit a key up here. One of the mode. Okay. Hey. Would you want to play and see if you remember? Welcome to Adventure. Would you like instructions? I guess that's a yes. <laughs> Somewhere nearby is a colossal cave, and others have found fortunes and treasure and gold. Let's remember that some who enter are never seen again. Magic is said to work in the cave. I will be your eyes and hands. Direct me with commands of one or two words. I shall warn you that I look at only the first four letters of each word, so you'll have to enter northeast as any to distinguish it from north, and down as, or as descend, or just D to distinguish it from general hints. Information on how to end your adventure, etc. Type info. You are standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. They put enter, right? Wait a minute. Let me get this. Can we get this shot? T Hold on. R. Enter. Okay, get a shot. And then another one. So this is Adventure on CPM. Adventure on CPM. An adventure ran on mainframes and minis and all kinds of things. You are in front of the building. You can go directly in. Yeah, you I are. I thought that wasn't going to work. Hmm. He remembers it. Yeah. He didn't say to type enter. Well, there's a building there. What else are you going to do with it? I guess you walk away from it. <laughs> You're inside a building, a well house for a large spring. Now you know what it is. There are several keys on the ground that here. This is a shiny, there's a brand, shiny breast lamp nearby. There's food here. There's a bottle of water here. Um, I guess 
I guess you've got to choose which one of these things you want to do. Um, Actually, you can take all of them. As far as I know, you have to type a command for each one. Okay, uh, brass. How about if you just write in like brass? No, you will. You type take lamp. Yeah, if that works. It says it only does the first Maybe. four characters, right? Yeah. Take lamp works. I don't know if the others also work. How do you backspace? Uh, uh, backspace. Backspace. Okay. No? No. Uh, or this seems to be echoing. No. It echoes the character you erased. Okay. So let's so pick it up. Pick up lamp. Not that. Take it pick up lamp. I don't understand that. I guess take. T A K E. Take L A N P. Yeah, like that. Take lamp. Okay. Okay. Uh, take keys. Keys. All right. I guess. Okay. Take keys. Take food. I guess you're supposed to grab all your goodies. Okay. Yeah, they all turn out to be useful eventually. Yeah, I see. It's a real, real text game when you're doing this, huh? Oh, here it is. Here your stuff. Cool. There's a sort of a crib sheet that you can figure out how I wrote it. And then that one here. Take one. So they actually had some pictures that came with it then. Hmm? They had pictures that came with it then. No. That's a map I made. Oh, you made By it. exploring a considerable one. And where did the code for the venture come from? Who uh, it? This just came from somebody at IMSI. I believe. Maybe Microsoft. I think it's IMSI. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, something... Very similar turned up on the Eclipse, hmm. except that it uh, the cave was closed between 9 and 5 p.m., so you couldn't play in company time. So the program seems to be written in Fortran, and each you know, so it hits the disk frequently. File the text is in a bunch of files. So, Eleanor, so where are you in the cave now? I left the um, I left the um, building and I'm in the forest with a deep valley to one side. Mm hmm So then I guess uh, you go east twice and then down through a grave or something. Okay. It takes a long time. Yeah, okay. I, I get the idea. Okay. Yeah. In some place you come to a dragon that eats you unless you're carrying the right thing, in which case it uh, okay. inexplicably keels over and dies. Okay, you're in a valley in the forest beside a stream tumbling along a rocky bed. Yeah. Okay, you just keep going. I think. Enter, enter stream. Let's do something dangerous here. Your feet are now wet. Oh, I got wet feet on this game. I'm sorry. I just can't continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. I don't remember that message. I think yeah. Did Where something I never tried. Uh, north. North. You go north. Because you're at the end of the road again. <laughs> so you try everything until. You Basically, there's a uh, place you get in a maze of twisty little passages all alike. Twisty little passages, huh? And everyone signs on the same way, but they are indeed in a connected pattern. They've rearranged the words or something. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, and, uh, well that's pretty. Like playing the game. This mm -hmm. was that game? Yes. I think it starts in. here, end of the road. I started in the middle of a piece of paper because I didn't know where it was going to go. So this is adventure. This is what let me get back to places quickly and try to explore something new. Building, I see. There's a lot of the building connections, uh huh. No, no, you end up most of it's off of here. Just out of the building? Yeah. Down to the cave? Oh, I guess it's Clue closes. Well, I don't remember. Oh, that's great. Well, I, but I, I will leave you this uh, sheet. So it's for the, we can disappear into this game. Manual. Ah, yes, I used to have one of those. So that's Microfire International. Oh, yeah. 
San Rafael, California. And it's a uh, WordStar. WordStar User's Guide for WordStar Release 2.1, revised 7-16-1980. Okay. Uh, disclaimer, introduction. So you wrote the whole thing function. wrong. Uh, in words, I believe so. You write yeah, it in it's obviously word for her files. Yeah, it was printed on that next spin writer that's out there, or on a Diablo of similar hmm. ability. Uh, you can see it's all in a courier-like uh, typewriter font. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have boldface and some enhancements in it. It doesn't look anywhere near as nice as something out of a new computer. It's all that bold and formatting commands. Yeah, yeah I, I use a lot of bold. Mm -hmm. Occasional underline. Mm -hmm. uh, subscripts and superscripts. Yeah. The early days of tech writing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Print. Capabilities. So the pictures of the menus. Oh, there's the menus. Let's get a shot of that. Describe each command. Uh, on screen text formatting. It did not record any of the formatting information in the file. You, know, mm. you had to remember uh, what your margins were to, re to reset them. Each time you rebooted? You know, each time you wanted to edit some text. Mm. If, uh, well, if it was justified, of course, the width of the line tells you what the margin is. Mm. But if it was ragged right, then the line might be too short. Mm. Yeah, like if you type control O R to set the right margin, it asks for the right margin column. And you either type a number or you press the escape key to use the uh, column where the cursor was. The cursor in the document before you type the command. Hmm. And did you uh, come up with all these particular commands yourself? I mean, did you? You, out of all the infinite possibilities, you decided that... You mean for the letters or the functions? Yes, for the functions. So. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like, I remember thinking, how should you delete characters? Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to be able to delete to both sides of the cursor, it seemed to me. So the Apple people have got it down to one, apparently. They have a key, uh, yeah. you know, labeled delete, that does what I call a backspace. Oh, yeah. But, uh, well, first off, you want to be able to delete single characters in both directions. Mm -hmm. Originally, I thought you wanted to be able to delete the rest of the word the cursor's in or the rest of the line. Mm -hmm. And pretty much it's come down to delete the whole word the cursor's in. Yes. And yes. delete the whole line the cursor's in. Turn off the But you know, yeah. well, when you yeah. start, you see all these keys and you start thinking up things for them to do. Right. And right. Then as you go on, you go back and try to prune because you, you want keys available for other things. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want too many. Yeah, well, that's an interesting, interesting thing. So there must have been quite a few you had to figure out that way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we could, if we go back, we, we could find... Yeah, there, there are a lot of things to decide what one should do. Yeah. Having so, never used an on-screen editor before. Right, like what really was going to work. Uh, I guess you had to get a lot of feedback from people. Yeah. Well, mostly I get the feedback from myself. Oh, right. You know, because I'm, I was always editing programs. Yeah. As I implemented the stuff. We have to remember to turn all our cell phones off during these shoots. Mm -hmm. A zillion calls today. Yeah. Well, my friend that. called from Africa, by the way. From, remember Stuart Gold? Yeah. And he said to say hello that he used your your programs in England when he was starting on microcomputers. Hmm. And then Galen called my wife Galen. Yeah. She said hello too. Oh, okay. Yeah, something that's touched thousands of people. Program. Did I? No, I don't think I did. 
One of my uh, friends was in Budapest in May when the Supreme Court decision about marriage came down. Okay. And he was he was in a store and his cell phone rings and his older lover in Sacramento calls him and said, Hey, did you hear about the court decision? Yeah, that was on the news an hour ago. Don't you think I know about anything here in Hungary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, the conversation continued, and they proposed to each other. Oh! And they got married last Tuesday, which was the oh. first legal day. In San Francisco, or? Uh, in Woodland. Woodland. Oh. In because uh, they're in Yellow County, north of South, because wow. he lives in Davis. Huh? But and they were very welcoming there. Oh, cool. I mean, the county clerk happened to be in the hall and saw two men walked in and asked what we wanted <laughs> and told told us where the room was, where the wedding was going to be. And, yeah. Huh? Whereas in Calaveras County, they decided not to do civil weddings at all anymore. Oh. Supposedly no relationship. They claimed they made the decision a few days before the court decision came down. Right, right. Yeah. So there's a bunch of brouhaha going, going on yeah. about how isn't there really budget enough to do an occasional civil wedding? <laughs> I mean, you only get one a month or something. Yeah. Uh, are you and there are other counties where they have volunteer, uh, what do they call them, marriage commissioners. Yeah. Able to Conduct, to conduct civil weddings, as opposed to, you know, the county is required by law to grant uh, uh, marriage licenses, mm -hmm. but conducting the, the wedding, you know, could be done by a minister or lots of other authorized people. Mm -hmm. Any any plans yourself? The, the, the department? Uh, it doesn't, to me, the formality doesn't seem important, but a lot of people think it's important. Mm -hmm. Important to do what straight people can do. Mm -hmm. I don't know, if I was living with a woman, would we get married? <laughs> I suppose eventually. Eventually. But one of the things to keep it simple is wait till after November. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it gets uh, outlawed again, uh, you might as well not bother to yeah. do it twice. Well, needs that, right? <laughs> well, the other thing it does is it makes filing your. T if, if you get a uh, domestic partnership in California, it makes your income yeah. tax complicated because you have to fill out a. You know, your California income tax is based on your federal. Yeah. You have to uh, fill out a federal return as though you were filing jointly, oh. even though you can't. You have to fill it out filing singly, individually, to send to the feds. But you have to fill it out as though you were filing jointly for the state, <laughs> because then there's a you know form of differences right. you go through. So you have to start from that fictitious federal return, <laughs> because you're required to file jointly Sounds very just to, as though you're married. Oh. Uh, this one again, yeah. The Word Star again. customization notes, which I'm quite sure is something I wrote hmm. uh, from July 31, 1980. So Word Star releases 2.0 and 2.1. Hmm. Tells all the things about how to make it work for a specific printer. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if you want Changing to Changing command keys, daisy printer items. Did you do um, call out tech support? Did you deal with any of that? Uh, you train uh, somebody for that, I guess? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Mostly we tried to minimize it, you know, tell people they should go to their dealers. Well, I send the dealers and hand hold them through this. Yeah, they're supposed to. And for 490, for 495, of which they get quite a bit, they're supposed to do quite a bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, did, I did some. But. Yes. This is the days. Well, that's interesting. So that's the hand drawn version of that? Take a shot of that. So that's what is that, uh, Rob? That's your hand-drawn notes. It's a hand-drawn picture of the keyboard. Of the keyboard. So. And.